year, uh, City Council has implemented a budgeting procedure that is, requires a little bit more detail and restricts funding in, in specific accounts uh, within the city, whereas in the past the city had given departments more of a blanket sort of pool of money that they could use uh, to, to fund various projects. The question is, do you think that the city uh, should provide line item budgeting uh, and, and should provide that more stringent uh, sort of accounting? Uh, or should the city, uh, as uh, the mayor has, has suggested, have more flexibility in how it uses its funds? Uh, we'll start this question with Mr. Molnar. Well, let's be real clear about line item budgeting. Last year, the budget was developed by the finance chair, which was Sylvia. How a councilman can develop a budget for a, a community is beyond me. It, it has caused so many issues and we have been reeling ever since. We have to keep going back and putting money back into funds that are defunct because someone developed a budget that is not working for us. I'm all about transparency. I'm all about showing where the money is going and where it's being spent and, and, and being honest and open to all the residents. But the problem we have right now is you have someone on council who assumed an administrative duty we have a meeting on the 29th to discuss another budget that was developed again by the finance chair. A member of council should never develop that budget. That should be done by the administration. After a lot of uh, consternation, we, we, we went over the budget and I actually supported it in the end. But after what we went through last year and, and what we're seeing this year, I'm not gonna support a budget that's developed by a council person. I think the new mayor coming in should develop that budget. It should be presented to us. And at that point, council can pick it apart. Unfortunately, a majority of council has chosen to side with the finance chair and, and develop that budget, which again, has caused nothing but issues. Uh, simple things like uh, inmate meals. We don't have enough money to feed the inmates and it, we, we brought that to everyone's attention in the last meeting and we still didn't put money in there to feed inmates. So there's many, many reasons why that's defunct and that's just one of many. All right, Ms. Darrow. Well, um the, the real truth of this is that we have, uh, city council has finance meetings and budget meetings. And when the budget was uh, being uh, presented, the budget was presented by the mayor, by his staff. We have um, video of everybody attending. Um, there was a schedule of, uh, I think the fire department went first and the police department and the building department and the service department, everybody presented their budget. And uh, I attended all those meetings, and uh, unfortunately, um, Council uh, Monar did not attend some of the meetings, so, uh, but we do have it on video. And uh, the line item um, is a very good idea, and what we did is that when, whenever they need more money, it's the administration is the ones who said that how much they wanted, what, what they wanted for their departments and then that's what we gave them. We gave them, we, we kind of tweaked out some of the stuff because there wasn't enough money. So each department got to pick their, their most important to their least important. And it was all worked out with everybody and then the line item, we always go back and give them more money if they need it in that line item. It's a very good idea and, I, it's, and uh, the, the council controls the money in the city, uh, not the mayor. Uh, Mr. Miller. When I was first elected in my first term, the city was broke. And uh, council and the mayor worked together. The mayor worked very hard and should get credit for that first four years to, uh, to bring us back. And um, each department head would submit a budget and uh, he would have a list of the things that were most needed and council would decide what was best, the best way to spend the money. And of course, uh, we did everything we could to give each department head all of mm -hmm. what they asked for. I don't remember turning down of very many things, but we always said we have to save some money for emergencies, for truck breakdowns, for a water main break. And um, in the first four year term, we went from being broke to being on pretty good financial foot. Pudding. And then in the second term was a similar situation. We had a decline in the, um, in the economy and we worked very hard to, uh, to have a carryover. So now the city's pretty healthy money-wise and uh, everybody gets credit for that. All the council people that have mm -hmm. served and the department heads, they would not be afraid to shave a little bit. A lot of employees waited too. So we have to kudos to the council people and the administration for the last 12 years. All right, Mr. Bilkey. 
I'm going to attack this question from a different angle. And being a person that lives in Macedonia and uh, being the president of my HOA board, yeah, we had some work getting done um, by the service department. And they came out, looked at the problem, said, I could probably fix that in 15 minutes, but unfortunately, I have to go back and get a PO for it. It's probably going to come back next week and do it. Well, two weeks later, it finally got fixed. And that's the problem with line item um, budgeting, is that you have to go and itemize everything that you spend. Um, I, I, I think it's trust. You trust your department heads to come up with a budget that they can work with, and you do give them flexibility. So you have a mayor who is elected by the people, and they, he elects and appoints um, department heads that come up with their budget. I think what Ms. Dar said is kind of the crux of the situation we have in Macedonia. The council controls the money. Well, the administrator is the one that controls the money. The legislative branch approves if that money should be spent or not. And I think that's where the line has been drawn where as a member of council, you shouldn't be spending the money. You should be approving how the money should be spent. So thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Molnar, you have 60 seconds to respond if you'd like. Councilor Darrow makes some great points. Uh, as a matter of fact, this evening, we were supposed to have a, uh, a finance meeting. Uh, I was unable to attend that meeting because I had committed to come here. Apparently, Councilor Darrow didn't know that until after the fact, and that meeting was canceled, and now she sits beside me. Many meetings have been scheduled when I have publicly said that I cannot make them. I have lost family members on two occasions where I have asked to have a meeting changed to a different day, and it was still held on that day. So much so that it was held on a Sunday at one point when no residents can make it, and it's the day of the Lord, and I asked respectfully for them to respect that, and they still huddle on a Sunday. So to attack me for missing a meeting for a death in the family or holding it on a Sunday, I think is a little uh, irresponsible. As for back for the line on a budget, you know, if, if the department heads can develop what they need and show us what they need, council will always try to accommodate their needs. If the fire department comes to you and says they need breathing apparatus, mm -hmm. How would a councilor know that developing the budget? That's the problem we're running into now. All right, Ms. Darrow, uh, you have 60 seconds if you'd like. Yes, the, um, the state auditor has an accounting system that the, that the cities use, and you have to have a PO, and it's, it's, it's put that way for a reason, Mr. Belke. And the finance department cannot issue a check without a proper PO, and you gotta have the money in the line item. And uh, it, it, it's, it's just the facts. Um, and yes, Mr. Monar, you know, sorry, but you did, um, I'm not sure why you missed those meetings. Um, and, you know, but, uh, but you weren't at some of the finance meetings or the budget, the budget meeting. But um, anyhow, the, uh, it, it's very important in a city or anywhere, you have checks and balances everywhere you go. You just don't give somebody a free pass. Okay, otherwise we wouldn't need a council. That's why there's five of us, and before there were seven of us, but that's why you have a council, is so that you can, there's checks and balances, and otherwise you wouldn't need a council. All right, Ms. Darrow, thank you. Mr. Miller, you have uh, 60 seconds to respond if you'd like. The finances of the city were um, an important part of being on council. It's not the only part, but it's an important part. And uh, you need vision. You need leadership, you need experience, but you have to be able to balance your own checkbook. You've got to be able to handle your own savings account and um, you have to be able to pay bills and you have to have a passion for protecting the money of the citizens and the tax dollars. I think our council has done that uh, in my time, certainly, and uh, I would keep an eye on them uh, forever to make sure that they do that. But I could find where we could save millions of dollars if we do things differently. Uh, we've never had a majority on council where we can really push through our uh, you know, a plan. So I'm hoping that we can do that with the results of this election. Thank you. Mr. Bilkey, you have 60 seconds to respond if you'd like. I don't need 60 seconds. All, all I'd like to say is that, that when you, you vote for a mayor and they're elected, you should let them do their job. And their job is to be the administrator of the city. Their job is to appoint department heads that they trust. Those department heads are supposed to put together a budget that is approved by council, not made by council. And that's where the problem lies, is that the problem is people on council currently 
want all the power. I would say, to piggyback off of yours, why would we have a mayor if, all the, if the council can spend all the money? We have a mayor because there are checks and balances, and I believe in that system 100%. But you can't have a mayor that has no power to terminate somebody. You can't have a mayor that has no power to make a budget because it's not going to be approved by council. So it's about trusting the people that the, trusting the man that the people elected.